Hello Leo and welcome to your year 2023 astrology and horoscope forecast. This is for your ascendant or your sun. Now what I'm going to do is just outline how I'm going to structure this video. Now each year of course consists of 52 weeks beginning on the 1st of January but in Western tropical astrology the new year begins with the vernal equinox, the spring equinox, the vernal point which this year is on the 20th of March and that divides the year into four cardinal quadrants of 13 weeks. So to make this analysis more relatable, I'm going to break the year down into those quarters. And also, I'm going to look at the energy of the lunar eclipse, which occurred on the 8th of November 2022, because the backdrop energy of that lasts for six months in total, so therefore the first four months of the new year, and that winter uh, solstice cardinal quadrant 4 of 2022 uh, although it was right at the end of the year on the 21st of December that provides a backdrop for around about the first 12 weeks of the new year then of course we have the solar return that point at the start of the year that gives us uh, an idea of what we can expect in terms of energies throughout the whole 12 months but we also have the major movers and shakers with Saturn on the move, Pluto also, Jupiter, the North Node, and crucially for you, Venus, the planet of Allure, is going to be with you for four and a half long months. You also have a glorious new moon in Leo, which is conjunct Venus, despite the retrograde, and and delightfully, the summer solstice, which ushers in Cardinal Quadrant 2 for the year of 2023 itself, sees a glorious conjunction between Venus and Mars in your sign. So, so much exciting stuff. Also, a solar eclipse in the part of your horoscope that's to do with being very dynamic and expansive and even more risk-taking in the sign of Aries, which will be augmented by that North Node, returning to the sector of travel and expansion for the first time in 18 and a half years. So I've got lots to share with you. And as I go through this, I'm going to give you the key dates and all the new moons and how they're going to impact on you, helping you to see when to make moves, when to perhaps stick rather than twist. And uh, give you as much information as I can. But if you would like to embrace more serious astrology, if you give me three pieces of birth data, of time, date and place of birth, I can produce your personal year 2023 forecast. Also, if you order in 22, you'll get the rest of that year free. Plus, I'll share with you your roadmap, your character analysis that can guide your moves for the rest of your life and 30% off for the whole package. Now, if you are new to my channel, thank you so much for joining me. If you would subscribe, please click and tap on the bell notification symbol. I'd be honored. If you've already subscribed, thank you so much for your continued support. So Leo, as we come into this new year, the following wind for you from that lunar eclipse is about balancing home against your worldly interactions. But your worldly interactions could be disrupted somewhat by some unexpected developments at the end of 2022 because the lunar eclipse is in a conjunction with Uranus, the planet of uh, freedom, the planet of truth, but also the planet of sudden change. But T square in both positions, the Sun in Scorpio and the Moon and Uranus in your 10th house, is the restrictive energies of Saturn in your sector of relating. So trying to keep it all together when it comes to your personal situation, your home life, or your professional demands could be a bit tricky as we uh, come into 2023. Also, Cardinal Quadrant 4 for 2022, which provides the backdrop for the first 12 weeks of the new year, 
Well, that of course ushers in the sign of Capricorn. Capricorn energy for us all is very much about structures. It's about the established order. Very much to do with big business, but it can be to do with property and rules and regulations. The type of things that are a little bit dreary that we all have to, at some level, adhere to. But for you, this uh, cardinal quadrant is very much about practicalities. It's about the details of life. And the sun is squaring up with Jupiter, the planet of growth and the planet of optimism in your sister fire sign of Aries. So as you come into 2023, you're going to have to juggle between what you want to do for yourself, Jupiter in Aries, and the commitments and obligations you feel you have to others. Now, if this sounds like a bit of a theme I've shared with you before, it has been somewhat of one over the last few years for you. Now, Jupiter and the Sun in a square can see us over promise. So it's important to avoid that trap and don't give yourself too many obligations. You know, we can be dutiful, which comes from that sixth house energy for you, the sign of Capricorn, but important to hold a little bit back for ourselves too. Now also, that winter solstice sees a midpoint in your sister fire sign of Sagittarius, which is brilliant because this is going to uh, bring out a more sociable and a bullion side of your nature for the Christmas period. But as you come into the new year, because it squares with Neptune in your sector of shared resources, and Neptune's a very dreamy, drifty influence. So I think when it comes to your budget, as you come into the new year, it's asking you really to try to nail things down so you're living within a structure that really works for you. Also, the moon is opposite Mars on that event. This can make you more impatient, particularly around balancing what you want to do as an individual against what other people want you to do as part of the collective. So a little bit of juggling around your time management is critical as you come into 23. Which brings us to the solar return. So this is the point at the start of the year, provides a backdrop for the whole 12 months. Now, the great news is that Mars and Jupiter, two planets which are very influential to your sign because they govern the second and third decans of the sign of Leo, well, they're forging a brilliant relationship as you come into this new year. Now, Mars is in a retrograde in your sector of friendship and will be through to the 12th of January, but it's going to be in a very bubbly area for you personally, right through to the 25th of March. And the 11th house where Mars resides is very much about your future plans, but it is about the collective, whereas Jupiter's in your sector of travel, higher education, and essentially freedom. So friends that really understand your direction of travel, literally and metaphorically, over the next 12 months are going to be people that you really gravitate towards. But of course, at the turn of the year, there is that Capricornian energy. And the sun is joined, still by Pluto, of course, but Venus, so Venus and Pluto in a conjunction. This could be really positive for you in the following year as far as jobs are concerned. Your personality power, Venus, and the way that you can approach tasks in a very structured but also self-disciplined way could win the approval of someone quite influential. But Venus conjunct Pluto often has some strings attached around relationships. So in a more romantic context, if you're in a tie where you're doing all the domestic chores and your partner basically is sat on their backside watching the TV, that's going to be something that will be profoundly disappointing to you this year. Also, Mercury is in a retrograde as we begin this new year in your sixth house. So I must say that throughout this year, you must be extremely precise around all details, whether it's paperwork, whether it's anything that you're sharing in terms of digitally. It could be in terms of the uh, appointments you have. 
anything that requires attention to detail could really catch you out if you're not really at it for the whole of the 12 months. Now also, as we come into this new year, the midpoint between the sun and the moon, which gives us the overall uh, holistic blend of the energy that guides this year for us all, is just under seven degrees in Pisces. Pisces energy for you is where you feel passion, it's where you're most invested, but the dissipating energy of Neptune has made that a tricky area for you since 2012. Well, of course, this year, Saturn, the planet of structure, is going to be moving into this area. And that can help to give you a lot more self-discipline, but also it can test out anything to do with longer term finances. But this particular midpoint is challenged by Mars. So your desire to be free spirited and just go with the flow in terms of Mars in the 11th house means that the energy in the 8th house could see you drawn towards perhaps being a little bit gung-ho in your friendship circle, particularly if you're single. There may be someone you encounter this year that really makes your pulse race. Whether they're right for you or not is another matter. So just be aware that right through this year, you need to balance your desires with your higher principles and logic. Now we also have those two lunations this year, which I will share more about shortly. But on January the 12th, the great news is that Mars ends that retrograde. On January the 18th, Mercury ends it. So if there have been some uh, brittle energies around the festive or New Year period around your situation, especially if there are things that are more of a, uh, of a practical and everyday uh, nature that you've been putting off, Mercury going direct can get you on the front foot. Now, the new moon on January the 21st is really interesting because ordinarily this would give you an opportunity to think very much about relationships, and it still can. But Venus, the planet of relating, which is going to bless your sign for four and a half months this year, it's actually in a very tight conjunction with Saturn. A weak relationship could make way from the 21st of January if it isn't really coming up to your expectations. But equally, Venus combining with Saturn could see you double down and work even harder at a tie that you do feel is valuable and important. Now, January the 22nd sees Uranus end the first of its retrogrades this year. And if there has been a sense of uncertainty or a lot of changes going on in your worldly or professional situation, I think it will get easy to make sense of where you can shine as an individual uh, from here in. But February the 20th sees a Pisces new moon. Now, of course, this is a critical part of your scope this year because of Saturn's arrival in this area. And Saturn, even though it's just nipped into the sign of Aquarius still, is very close to this new moon. If there are any financial concerns you've got, they're likely to be flagged at this point and over the next few weeks. But you also have an opportunity to shift around your resources or to think more astutely about how you can squeeze a bit more from the budget. Now, March the 7th, these Saturn arrive in the sign of Pisces. For us all, this is going to put a much greater emphasis on how we work with water, which is, of course, the ruler of the sign of Pisces. Saturn is very much to do with structures, and I think we're going to become much more conscious of the use of water, how long we spend in the shower, how much water we use in the bath. Do we uh, use water a little bit too freely? Also, what's the impact of pollutants on our rivers, our sea, and also our lakes? So that's going to be the thing that I think all of us become much more aware of. But for you, the eighth house, of course, is shared finance, can be to do with longer term uh, investment stocks. Uh, it can also be to do with mortgages and raising money for business purposes. Now Saturn's a very serious influence and of course it can provide limitation. So over the next two and a half years, if you really want to 
keep making progress around your financial affairs, the trick is going to be application and perspiration. Don't see Saturn in this area is an absolutely exclusively bad influence. It just means we have to work hard in the area that it's applying its uh, energies to. But of course the eighth house can be very much to do with intimacy. So if you've got a relationship which lacks intimacy, I think Saturn is going to see you wanting to work out what the solutions to that situation could be. March the 14th also sees a square between Mars and uh, Neptune. Now, if you recall, in October and November last year, there were two, uh, I think it was the 12th of October and maybe around about the 8th of November, there were two exact squares between Mars and Neptune. But within three degrees, the whole of October and November were creating this environment of a lot of mistrust. We know that information these days is often used in not necessarily the purest forms. So just be aware that somebody around your situation maybe is playing or could play a few games and it could be around your friendship circle. Now on March the 20th, we have the spring equinox, which is wonderful for you because this sees the sun arrive in the sign of Aries, which shares your fire triplicity. This is the first cardinal quadrant of the new year. And of course, it's the start of the astrological year as well. So there's a sense of hope, of initiation, of new beginnings. But for you, this is the ninth house. This is about being more daring and expansive, just like Jupiter has been pushing you to do all year. Now, the thing with this uh, particular event is the midpoint between the sun and the moon, which gives us a flavour of what we can expect in the following 13 weeks, up until the time of the summer solstice, is actually in Pisces, and it's conjunct Neptune. And also, they are still within three degrees, squaring up with Mars. So there could be some uncertainty about your financial future and how you go forward. So the way to push back on that Neptunian energy is to make sure that you get very informed in a very factual and precise way. And that will help you to deal with that energy. But the sun moving into Aries is still very exciting for you. Now on March the 21st, we have a, 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 an almost immediate Aries new moon. But these, this Aries new moon actually squares, it's a disassociate square. Mars is just still in the sign of Gemini at about 27 degrees. But we do have a square between your desire to expand and Mars nearly going into your 12th house. So just be aware of your deeper motives for anything that you're trying to do or anything you're trying to escape because the ninth house can be very much about uh, freedom and independence. So if you have a strong desire to get away from someone or something, just be aware that it could in part be to do with Mars. However, ironically, Mars does forge a really positive angle with Saturn. And you know, despite Saturn moving into Pisces this year, which is not one of its easiest transits, it is forging a lot of very valuable angles throughout this year. Not exclusively, there are some challenges too, but this particular one suggests if you can work on past skills, experience and knowledge, essentially Mars in Cancer, with uh, how you, you understand how you can apply these in a deeper way that can be good for you to provide extra security, particularly financially. I feel that redeploying those experiences, even old contacts, could see you dig deep and try to make the most of whatever your situation has in store for you. Now, Venus is also in the sign of Taurus at this point on this particular new moon. And the Taurus position for you, of course, is where you connect to the wider world. Venus is very graceful. It also governs the sign of Taurus. So if you need to apply for jobs, do presentations, cultivate contacts with important people, and remem remember Venus conjunct Pluto at the turn of the year is helping you with this all year, this is a fine time to do so. 
Now March the 23rd sees Pluto replace Saturn in the sign of Aquarius. But it's only going to go up to 27 minutes before retreating on the 11th of June back into your sixth house. What does this mean? Saturn has been uh, testing your relationships over the last two and a half years and it's possible that you have gained enormous understanding of what you need and want to give to others but it's also possible that in a more transformational way that there is still a, a greater amount of, of knowledge to flow and I think once Pluto moves into your seventh house more fully next January the 24th this is going to begin a time of radical transformations around all sorts of partnerships, interactions, and also relationships. So it's a different kind of energy to Saturn, which of course can be more restrictive, but it is very powerful. Now on April the 20th, 21st, depends where you are in the world, we have the second Aries lunation, a gorgeous solar eclipse conjoining with Jupiter, the planet of growth. So this really is giving you a lot of encouragement to be more daring. Your sign is a fire sign, but you are also fixed. And Leo people, although they often like to draw a lot of respect, acknowledgement, praise, affection, and of course, love and adoration, often you need to be working with someone else in order for you to thrive. And I think what this solar eclipse is saying to you is that this is time for you to fly free more. It doesn't mean to say you need to finish a relationship, but you need to develop your own individuality. And this solar eclipse over the following six months, because Jupiter is very much about knowledge, particularly applied to the ninth house as it is here, is saying if you need to learn new skills, you need to break out of some restrictive routines. You need to be more spontaneous, go for it. But because Pluto is cresting on the end of your sixth house and on your seventh, there is a square. So it's possible that someone close to you won't like this desire for you to be a freer spirit. But it's something you've got to go for if you really want to manifest this year's potentials for you. But it could lead to a, a few politics, a bit of push and pull. Now, May the 1st sees Mercury slam on the brakes in the sign of Taurus. So even if you're using the energy of Venus to cultivate those contacts, there could still be delays in information coming through. We all know that with Mercury retrograde, it can cause snags. But equally, Mercury retrograde can help us to rethink, recalibrate, go again in a different, more refined way. Is your approach to work working as you want? Are you getting the recognition you need? If not, Mercury is asking you to rethink during its retrograde. So the 5th and 6th of May see the reverse lunar eclipse from that one that occurred on the 8th of November last year that was so incredibly potent. But this one sees the Sun and Uranus together rather than uh, the Moon and Uranus together. And the Moon is actually in the sign of Scorpio, which is very much about deeply held feelings. And of course, for you, it's about your home sector. Again, sudden changes or how you want to alter your approach to your connection to the wider world may rock things on the home front, but you may feel that you have no choice but to flex and to try some different things. And if that's the case, good for you. And you're supported from the 15th when Mercury goes direct in this area. So some new initiatives can start to pay off. May the 16th sees Jupiter rise right to the top of your scope. And this is truly exciting. Jupiter is the planet of fortune. Its rulership of Sagittarius is very much about growth and opportunity. Its rulership of the sign of Pisces, much more of a spiritual dimension. But the 10th house and the sign of Taurus is quite earthly. So for over a year, one year and nine days, you can enjoy some true fortune around your professional situation. If it's not shaping up straight away, keep the faith because one of the things with Jupiter is it can 
almost trick us into thinking that everything will land in our laps without too much effort and effort is going to be critical to progress with this Jupiter transit and Saturn's reminding you of that when it comes to if you want to increase your resources you will have to put a lot of energy into your talents. Now May the 17th through to 16th of June sees the North Node in its reversal coming to the end of its journey uh, through the sign of a Taurus come into a conjunction within three degrees with Jupiter. This can be particularly fortunate for you and around about the 1st of June can be a real hot spot of opportunity when it comes to jobs or increasing your profile, getting greater recognition. So really lovely stuff. Now the Taurus new moon of May the 19th is also great for your career because it's linking to Mars tucked up in your 12th house. Don't worry about that. The moon and the sun are raising your profile. Mars is just saying, how can you dig deep to unearth some unused or unutilized resources and skills that have perhaps been dormant or perhaps it's to do with past uh, knowledge or jobs you had can be repackaged in a new and more enterprising way in the here and now. So from May the 19th for one month, a tremendous opportunity for you. But May the 20th is one of the highlights of the year for me, for you, because Mars, the planet of passion, the planet of desire, the planet of instant gratification, ends a six week journey through your 12th house, which is quite sensitive, and arrives in your sign. You're gonna get a big boost of energy, but also a sense of your attractiveness is really going to skyrocket. But on May the 21st, you could find that there's a fated attraction that lights up your year. Someone you encounter, you may not even actually like them, but you could find them almost irresistible as Mars goes opposite Pluto. But equally, Mars in your own sign opposite Pluto could tempt you into trying to dominate a situation, particularly around a partnership, that wouldn't be so good for you. So important to stick with fairness, because when Mars and Pluto are in the mix, the intensity, these are the two rulers of Scorpio, is incredible and it's very difficult to be a bit more detached and cultivated and calm because it's desire switched on to max. Now June the 6th sees Venus enter Leo for that four and a half month journey. And this is absolutely delightful. Now, Venus in your own sign, I think it's almost certain to give you the desire to give yourself some kind of makeover. Even if you're someone who feels you have a very established way of dressing and presenting yourself, you may be surprised by your desire to give yourself that uh, new and more dynamic and alluring look. But Venus in the first house, don't be surprised if new admirers beat a path to your door this uh, this four and a half month period. But also it's going to give you a lot more self-confidence. So if you need to demonstrate your flair around artistry or crafts or uh, the more creative part of your nature, this is absolute manner literally from heaven. So a fantastic opportunity for you. But I think in terms of your love life, if you're single, you're not going to be short of admirers through this next four and a half months. In fact, there could be a big choice to be made before long. Now, Pluto returns to Capricorn on June the 11th. As I said, this year it's just a brief sojourn. Next year, it's really going to have a radical impact on you. Even if you're someone who sees yourself as a born again a singleton, you may be surprised by how that mindset changes uh, as we go into 24. But for now, it moving back into your sixth house just reminds you of the need to make sure that all the practicalities in your world work well and also to be mindful of anything to do with health. Pluto is about transformation. The sixth house is about purity. June the 17th, Saturn goes retrograde. This could be tricky. So important through to the 4th of November that when it comes to your longer term resources, you are not necessarily risk averse, 
but certainly cautionary in your approach. Now June the 18th sees a Gemini new moon but another square with Neptune so that 11th house energy buzzing against that Neptunian vibe in your 8th house. I think some friends maybe one or two could prove to be a bit disappointing this year. You may also get attracted to a group of people and then find out that what you thought they were about is not what they're about at all. Be aware of keeping your expectations as realistic as possible because the new moon in the 11th house is very much about uh, the highest hopes that you may have. You don't want them to be crushed because someone takes you for granted or takes advantage of you. And I would be particularly careful around group finance at that point. Now, June the 21st, we have the summer solstice and the beginning of Cardinal Quadrant 2, the next 13 week slot of the year, ushering in the sign of cancer, which for us all is very much about security. It's about uh, our environment. It's about feeling at peace. But for you, ironically, the sun in this location could see you wanting to perhaps just reflect a little bit more deeply on what life is about. But what offsets that this year, which is quite unique, is that Venus is conjunct uh, Mars on this event. They're within about three or four degrees and it's in your sign. Rarely has your sex appeal going to be higher than this, but it means because the sun's in the 12th house, it's possible you could get to know someone over the next 13 weeks in a low-key, confidential, or even clandestine way. But Jupiter is also forging a terrific angle to Saturn. Jupiter's about growth, Saturn's about restraint, and sometimes about retraction. When the two are together in a positive angle, like they are here, this sextile, we can get steady growth. So I think Jupiter high in the sky, uh, linking well with Saturn, could see some kind of deal or offer come for you from the 13 weeks from uh, the summer solstice, uh, bringing you through to the autumnal equinox that could really thrill you. July the 12th, one of the big events of the year, the North Node reversing into your sector of travel, higher education, philosophies, and freedom for the first time in 18 and a half years. Think back to what happened then. It's going to be in this location through to the end of January 25. Think back what happened over those 18 months at that time, because something to do with you embracing the more free-spirited and spontaneous part of your nature is almost certainly have come to the fore. The Cancer New Moon on July the 17th is forging a link to Uranus, reminding you to stay open-minded about those professional affairs all through this year. But the Cancer New Moon is tricky in a way because it's in a, it, it, it asking you to embrace the more uh, vulnerable and in some ways more empathetic part of your nature, whereas Uranus wants you to uh, be loud and proud. What's gonna to help to offset the sensitivity of this new moon which of course is the most important new moon of the whole year as far as the moon's concerned because it rules the sign of cancer is that you have that conjunction between Venus and Mars giving you that much more devilment at this part of the year. Now July the 21st does, the 23rd does see Venus slam on the brakes go into a retrograde through to the 3rd of September. It's possible that someone's really taken uh, a center stage in your affections, or maybe it's going to be more than one person. And the retrograde is asking you to think very carefully about what you want from relationships. It's important, very important to be sincere because you have an innate mag magnetism and charisma that very few other signs have. It depends on how much uh, planetary influences you have located in Leo or in the fifth house, the more you have, the more your profile will attract people. So that gives you a, a dilemma in some ways because it's, it's lovely to be admired and adored. Um, but we can soon lose people's respect if we don't show them 
uh, our respect. So just be mindful that you may need to think very carefully about matters of affection or creativity on the back of that retrograde. However, the Aquarius full moon, which occurs in your opposite sign on August the 1st, has a great link between Mars and Jupiter. So if you recall, these two were in a fantastically dynamic link at the start of the year. So once more they're repeated, but for you it's much it's much more to do with the physical domain rather than you applying your more fiery spirit. But Mercury is opposite Saturn at this point of the year. If you have got any concerns about finance or shared assets, I think, uh, or cash flow, they could come to the fore at this point. However, the Leo new moon on the 16th of uh, August is absolutely thrilling. This is probably one of the most potent uh, Leo new moons for a long time because of Venus being so closely tethered to the sun and the moon. And of course, it's the most important new moon of the whole year as far as the sun is concerned because the sun governs your sign. So that magnetism, despite uh, Venus's retrograde, is really going to be sensational in the following month. August the 23rd, however, does see Mercury go retrograde in, its, in one of the two signs it governs of Virgo through till the 15th of September. Very careful stewardship of resources required through that. August the 27th, Mars moves into your third house. If you've yet to learn to drive, the next six weeks can trigger it. If you already are someone who likes to move around, you may get yourself a new mode of transport. The third house is often linked, to be honest, with cycles. So maybe an electric bike, maybe one of those electric scooters, because they're nippy. Third house, very nippy. But of course, Mars in Libra technically is detrimented. But for you, I just think this gives you a lot of passion about your ideas. Uh, over the following six weeks. Now Uranus goes into its second retrograde of the year on August the 29th and of course the 10th house where Uranus goes retrograde is all about your work and it's about trying to challenge that side of your nature which really does prefer the status quo, your fixed nature. But on August the 31st we have a Pisces full moon that's conjunct Saturn. So you're running into a little bit of monetary traffic in this part of the year. So your personal situation can be going swimmingly well, but I think in terms of assets, great care is needed with Saturn on that full moon. September the 3rd, however, Venus goes direct. So that's delightful. Things will speed up. If there have been uncertainties around you know, where you express your talents or where you express your affection, that can become clearer. But September the 4th sees Jupiter go into a retrograde virtually to the last day of the year, the 30th of December. So again it's saying don't take uh, your professional situation any more than your personal situation for granted. That application that Saturn asks us to apply to all elements of our life is going to be a consistent theme. The Virgo new moon, however, of September the 15th is in a terrific angle with Uranus, so your ability to think outside the box and be more uh, innovative and fresh in your approach, particularly to the type of jobs you could do, can really be to your advantage. Mercury also goes direct on that day, so money owed can come to you. September the 23rd, we get the third of 2023 specific cardinal quadrants, and the Sun moves into the sign of Libra. So the next 13 weeks for us all, very much about relating. But for you personally, relationships to do with siblings, to do with your neighbours, to do with your immediate community, or your digital connections can really come to the fore. There's a, a really positive link between the midpoint in Scorpio, your fourth house, and Jupiter in your 10th house. If you are thinking of moving, I thought an opportunity could come up uh, in that 13 week period in the run up to the winter solstice. But the Sun in Libra, your third house, does forge a tense quincunx, 150 degrees, with Saturn on that event, Saturn in your eighth house. So your ideas, the third house, in terms of professional 
or business or entrepreneurial strands really need to be aligned you know ideas alone don't make us wealthy it's the application but critically it's also resources so there can be many a good idea that's been dreamt up in the middle of the night with a light bulb moment but someone comes along and actually captures the prize because they have the bigger amount of assets to apply that idea in a way which provides an outcome so that could be a little bit of a test for you now on october the 14th the Libra uh, solar eclipse is conjunct Mercury and this is in your third house so your mind's going to be really nimble but they're forging an opposition to the North Node in the sign of Aries but I love this if you do want to travel and you want to do something that's more ambitious or uh, engage with higher education this Libra solar eclipse can be very valuable to you that's not to say that you can't do these things at other points of the year I mean we do have that total solar eclipse in your ninth house 20th and 21st of April the north node moving on the 12th of July into your ninth house they're great for those things but I just think that this lunar eclipse gives you a bit more uh, incentive a bit more speed and a bit more uh, desire to make it happen. Now November the 1st sees Scorpio New Moon and it's trying Saturn. If you do move this could be a fabulous time to settle in your new abode or a time to refinance or a time to rent a property or perhaps do something structurally like refit the kitchen or the bathroom or build an extension. The 4th of November sees Saturn direct the worries that you have seen have come up with Saturn's influence in your 8th house are going to be resolved to some degree but as ever whether Saturn is direct or retrograde we still got to work hard. November the 24th however this is fantastic for you. Mars moves into the most delightful area your uh, sister fire sign of Sagittarius the fifth house is very romantic, it's very demonstrative, it's affectionate and it's much more risk-taking. Even for someone like you who can be a bit cautious to take that first step, Mars is really pushing you out into the social milieu. Now December the 12th sees the new moon in Sagittarius conjunct Mars. How good is that? It could be you leading the way and if you still haven't met that significant other I think the following month could see some serious flirting going on and perhaps even some serious uh, hugging under the mistletoe. But December the 13th does see Mercury go into a retrograde this time in Capricorn so you can see there's a pattern the year starts with that sixth house Capricorn Mercury retrograde then you have the tenth house Taurus retrograde earth sign then you have the Virgo second house retrograde then the uh, sixth house Mercury retrograde repeated again so that's four lots of retrogrades and then this one on the 23rd of December sees Mercury go into your sector of, of romance and affection some cross wires are possible I think over this Christmas time but also important to know that the sixth house is about precision the tenth house is about our role in life and our connection to the wider world the second house is about the everyday money. So Mercury this year is asking you to be very businesslike about uh, your resources. It's not just Saturn, it is Mercury retrograde too. Now December the 22nd sees the fourth of the year 2023 cardinal quadrants. We're only going to have the impact of this really for the last 10 days of this year. But it does see uh, a conjunction between the midpoint in Pisces and also Saturn so again there could be just a cautionary note about not being too free and easy with resources there's also the moon in Taurus so quite high in the sky if you've got the moon in Taurus in your natal chart this will be fine if not the square with Pluto could create some politics around home emotion and family 
But having said that, the Sun and Mercury, despite Mercury's retrograde, are in a conjunction and they link magnificently with Saturn and also with Jupiter as this year comes to a close. So despite the fact that the year is asking you to work extremely hard around those resources, be very, very applied, there is a more expansive dimension with that Aries energy through that total solar eclipse and the North Node. You have the glory of Jupiter in the 10th house, which can bless you. But most of all, your magnetism is given a tremendous platform with Venus and Mars this year. So as you come to the end of this year, I think even though there may have been some disappointments, we're all probably going to have to get used to being a bit more thrifty and to budget a bit more shrewdly. But I think you can look back if you've really applied yourself with a degree of real satisfaction as 2023 comes to a close. Thank you so much for joining me. Stay safe, take care and goodbye for now.